Because we have two mindsets in this world. It's either you do everything until something pops off, mm -hmm. or people will tell you to do one thing and it'll mm -hmm. open an avenue for everything. Mm -hmm. And I used to hate the fact that those two mindsets would get forced on me. People really will have times in their lives where they're battling between those two. And you'll be yeah. having the mindset of one thing, but doing what your parents told you, which was, right. I'll just do this one thing, knowing that that's not what you want to do. What it do, everybody? And thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broad. Cast. I am your host, Day Day, and today, I mean, I usually say I'm joined by someone that wears many hats, but I mean, goddamn, this person right here is involved in so many things from being an artist to being an actor, a comedian, an athlete, a fellow podcaster, right? Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by Charlotte's own Quan the Guy. What to do, bro? What's good, man? What's goody? How y'all doing? It's I, the Quan That Guy, man. Feeling great, feeling lovely. Mm -hmm. Happy to be here more than anything. Yeah, man, we made it happen. Quan That Guy in the building. So let me ask you first and foremost, the name Quan That Guy, where did it come from and why, in fact, are you that guy? Oh, man, man. That's a good story. <laughs> I actually had this thing where I tell people, man, Unless you're that person, unless you're, 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 I actually don't like the term uh, I'm him, but unless you're really divine or you got it, you really can't give yourself a nickname. Mm. Uh, but um, that nickname was given to me, um, R.I.P., by an old head named Mitch in my hood, man. He was, uh, I was young, 16, 17, running around with a lot of females, just doing a lot of stuff Yeah, that was a little advanced for my age. And um, I think he had seen me like third time that, that week, different girl, mm -hmm. I had a different car because I was renting out cars. We had a rental car service that would let us just... We get rent out a different car every day. We couldn't keep more than one car because we weren't supposed to have them. And you were 16, 17 at this time? Yeah, and it was okay. the way he was finessing. He was killing $200. He was killing us. Okay. $200 yeah, 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 for yeah. like a two day. He was killing us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Us. And, um, but y'all had to get the stun on. 16, oh, no. 17, you had to get the stun on. I'm talking on. to 20, 21 year olds. So, yeah, you know, yeah. But one day he seen me, he was just tired of it. He said, you know what, man? I'm going to let you know now, man. You that guy. Quan, you was that guy. Quan, that guy. Because. Y'all, and he started, just, he was really kind of making me hot because he was like, y'all, Quan, that guy, he was a different one. Yeah, yeah. I really think in a, in a in a real serious sense, he was kind of trying to teach me a lesson in that moment. Like, you know, man, you're moving too much. You're doing too much. You, mm. you, I don't know if that was like a funny, subcon you know, a sarcastic, subconscious way for him to do it. But I took the name from that moment and I slowed down with all the uh, different females at that time. Okay. Yeah, I was going crazy. Did you slow down or did you just quiet it down, not be as loud? Maybe a mixture of both. Okay. Maybe a mixture of both up until probably just, you know, just last year or two. Okay. Because in a sense, that is slowing down, like knowing how to like be more discreet with it, not be as loud. That could be a way of slowing down in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Privatizing your moves. I, um, yeah. I, 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 was, I was a big victim of preaching and speaking too fast what I was planning or what I was trying to do. Mm. And then negative energies that wasn't even either not fucking with it, either wanted to do what I was planning or just, you know, just wanted to shoot it down entirely. They would throw them negative energies in it. Yeah. It would muddle my plans. Or I, maybe I would overthink from the negative things that they would say. Mm. And it would make me either, you know, fuck up what I was doing, second guess or whatever the case may be. So definitely learning about that now though. Just privatizing, keeping shit quiet, popping out when it's time to do it. You know? Yeah. So so real quick, back to that story. What, what part of Charlotte are you from first and foremost? Southside Homes. Shout out to Southside Homes, man. That's notor that's a notorious, notorious spot of Charlotte. I um what I like to do whenever I'm in a city I'm not familiar with, when I first moved out here, I would just take my bike through uptown and just ride all through uptown, South End, South Boulevard, everywhere. And I remember riding past Southside Homes and I was like, okay, that's that part of Charlotte right there. Like I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah, and then I yeah. seen it, and then you can put two and two together. I don't even think I saw the sign that says Southside Homes. Yeah, I just yeah. got. I was like, okay, that aura, that energy. Yeah, right yeah. I was like, okay, that's Southside right there. Yeah. Um, so it's funny that you said that with the old head that RIP that gave you the name and in, in that story because I feel like every old head does that. Maybe maybe they take that as a job in a sense because in high school we had a facilitator, Mister Belt. Everybody from Mead remember Mr. Bell. He was a facilitator. Looked like he was fresh out the joint. I mean, he was like he was like in his fifties, crazy swole up top, Brolic. legs tiny as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Just gold tooth. He had a Dorito body. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Dorito. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm still in that joint. And um, he was from Annapolis, and uh, so he had the gold tooth and all that shit. So he loved the football team. He was on the football team. And same with you. Like I had like, and I was, I was a quarterback. I was in eleventh grade. And I'm starting quarterback for varsity at the oh, he time. He was the man, y'all, bro. So I'm I'm B mock, big man on campus. I have it. It, it was 
it wasn't that crazy, but it was different different joints. Oh, yeah, I'm already knowing. You know what I'm saying? So here's how he would do it, right? He'd be like, man, and then sometimes I wouldn't even have been with one before, other day before. He'd be like, man, you with another one just yesterday. I seen you with that other honey dip. Now you with her. Man, you you a fool, man. You moving too fast, man. Saying it loud as shit yeah, in front of the girl. Yeah, yeah. So she looking at me side-eyed like, damn. you. I'm like, yo, he playing. What are you talking about? Yeah, he'll yeah. say that shit and then just walk off. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, yo, that's literally, that's like reminds me of the story that you just said. Old heads, they, it's a few things that got to kind of do, yeah. you know what I'm saying, in a sense to, to sharpen us up, straighten us up. come from their personal experience. Yeah. 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 It probably happened to them. And then when, when we old heads, we going to do the same thing. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, what you say, I'm a, I'm a privatize what I say. I'm going to definitely say it a certain way to what he know, but mm-hmm. like, you know, hey man, you moving quick now. You, mm-hmm. Come on now. How, how y'all say that? You moving fast, ain't it? Nah, for real. <laughs> All right. Um, so like I said, man, you got a lot of things going on, so we're going to try to touch on them. Uh, right now, currently, must, what's the most current uh, thing that you got uh, going on or working towards? Oh, um, man. Uh, Solidify with the basketball a little bit. Still need to go harder with that, but uh, right now, I'm trying to focus more on my music. It's comedy. Um, I actually got like 12 movie scripts. Like this, this is crazy, bro. But uh, more so the entertainment, the music, just because um, I have, I have something to say. I've been making music before the basketball YouTube stuff popped off. I've been making music since what, 2003, uh, commercially putting out since 2010. So like mm. I, that's actually the first lane ever. I think basketball probably came 2005, probably fifth grade, but like I literally had a, ba- a rapping group, trio mm-hmm. set in elementary school. I never forget this, fourth grade. Uh, Michael and Michael. It was me, Michael and Michael. We always hang together. One Michael was black, the other Michael was Jewish. Uh-huh. But they was fucking with it. You know, we was talking about trio set we was going to do. It started getting to the point where I'm starting telling them like, yeah, I man, you need to have your verse tomorrow, by tomorrow. It started becoming yeah. like homework. It gets yeah. backed out quick. They was like, no, nah, we're not doing this. Uh, but yeah, that's why I feel like uh, as of recently, I got I'm about to go do an off the glove, uh, the dirty glove bastard, the poor, uh, the interview in Atlanta. Uh-huh. I'm about to go what, do that. What's the um the dude that runs it? What's his name? I'm not sure. I'm just so familiar with the entity. Yeah. Uh, sent the email, but definitely paid me ready. So we definitely finna get that together. But music, entertainment, comedy, right now. So it sounds like music is that first love. You feel me? Yeah. And yeah. I, I don't want to stray away from that right now. Yeah. Yeah. I really like the song. Is is it titled Whining? See you whine. See you whine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really fuck with that joint. That shit is a vibe. So when it comes to music, uh, is it a certain avenue as far as the more R&B or rapping, or do you try not to solidify yourself in just one thing and be free-spirited with it? Yeah, I'm definitely an all-around artist. I got a country song, reggae song, but I will I will be honest, though. Neo Soul Conscious Rap is probably my core, mm-hmm. but you can get every, every genre of music from me just because every mood, everything I've been through, or just whatever I'm like. I'm one of those people. Play a beat, play any type of song, any type of beat, I'm going to make a song to it. So where are you at now? Like, what type of music are you recording now? What headspace are you in now when you are recording? Like, what stage of life and recording music are you in at this moment? Right now, in this moment, um, I'm kind of at the beginning stages of everything I've ever worked for is starting to come into fruition. Uh, I just need to uh, do right and kill everything. I need to stay positive, keep giving back, keep showing love, and uh, just continue to put out stuff so... I got uh, something coming out called Be Yourself. It's going to be a short EP, short couple, you know, four four tracks, four or five tracks. And then I got the gritty, grimy, because at the end of the day, remember, when you're coming up, when you're getting to that point, just as much love as you're getting, you're getting the same amount of hate. Mm-hmm. And my biggest narrative has always been, you know, the, the guy they love to hate on the court just because of my abrasiveness. So definitely got something called Keep your, keep That Same Energy. that will be following that. that will be a little bit more gritty, a little bit more in your face and so uh, I, I'm just gonna give them two different moves yeah set the tone right now for be yourself positivity you know it's about to be summertime mm-hmm. it's about to be uh you know the sun's about to be out I definitely want to take advantage of the R&B spectrum right now but as it get hot as it gets hotter you know I'm gonna yeah. definitely get hotter with the music man yeah yeah um so it just seems with the music the acting the comedians uh the stand-up comedy it just seems like you're someone who felt like it's a calling to give people something to Give them um, some type of entertainment, if you would. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I guess you say that's the right word. Where did that come from? Where you felt like, okay, it was my calling to deliver something, to deliver uh, art yeah, in many yeah, forms yeah. for people. Where did that come from? I love the way you put that. I'm not going to forget that. The you art? Know, that might be going in the bio. Yeah, yeah, nah. Yeah, yeah. I had to switch it up because I was like, entertainment. I was like, eh, not necessarily. Yeah, yeah. yeah art, yeah. So that's where did that come from? Um, More than anything... Just being all around talented at such a young age, just doing so much stuff. But uh, one of my biggest uh, inspirations at an early age was definitely uh, Jamie Foxx. Mm. Uh, very well-rounded. Very well-rounded. Yeah. Who else? Who else? We got Jamie and then um, 
We got a... Uh, honestly, he's probably one of the first ones, but him and a couple other inspirations. But basically, just seeing the diversity in uh, him, seeing the diversity, and I say Eddie Murphy was one of the... Uh, mm -hmm. Not matter of fact, yeah, he's definitely one of the ones. Because I didn't know he had music out. Yeah, with Rick hit, James, Party All The Time. Hit song. My girl learns to party all the and time. And I, I used to hear the song and never knew it was him. Yeah, yeah, so, that's, so, that's Eddie. <laughs> but um, I definitely say just a lot of our uh, early black inspirations, uh, they get, they played a part. And just mm -hmm. me just wanting to be a part of everything, just wanting to do so much stuff, yeah. talent shows, just doing so much stuff from an early age that I just feel like I could do it all. So I, I used to hate the limitations. Yeah. Because we have two mindsets in this world. It's either you do everything until something pops off mm -hmm. or people will tell you to do one thing and it'll mm -hmm. open an avenue for everything. Mm -hmm. And I used to hate the fact that those two mindsets would get forced on me. And mm -hmm. I used to feel like, well... I create my own algorithm. Algor uh, I create my own algorithm with it because I feel like I'm a glitch in the system anyway, a glitch in the matrix. But like, people really will have times in their lives where they battle between those two, and you'll be yeah. having the mindset of one thing, but doing what your parents told you, which was right. I'll just do this one thing, knowing that that's not what you want to do. That's I would say is the number one uh, number one factor that holds people back from chasing a certain dream or going down a certain avenue is mm. you know their print their parents saying. You know, that'll be a waste of time. You won't make money off it, whatever may have mm -hmm. you. Um, yeah, that's very, very important. Uh, so do you thrive more from people viewing your art? People seeing people, people being in your presence and you displaying your art in front of people. Do you thrive more off of that? Like uh, let's say if it's two people compared to 200, are you giving that same or is it the more people, the more you kind of feel that and feed into? Nah, I, I guess that might be a thing when I get bigger, but right now it's definitely same energy. It could be two mm -hmm. people in the room, two, three hundred. But at the beginning, I say for most artists, it was more so of a, I want to be seen uh, thing just because it might, it might, you know, most artists or most entertainers or whatever the case may be might not have got a lot of attention. So that's maybe a part of it. But mm -hmm. personally, at this stage in life now and probably after I start really making waves with music, and really touching people, I really want to help people. I want to create an experience. I want you to never forget um, certain things that I might have said, certain notes I might have hit. I've had moments where I made people cry for my music. Um, I've had moments where I had people tell me, you know, man, I was about to, I was about to go crash out. I was about to go do this, but you know, mm -hmm. I listened to your song. I didn't do it. So after I started realizing the influence, the positive influence of what music can do for people who might have been in the same situation as me, who might have been, you know, thinking too negatively on the world, I really started wanting to help people. And I was like, you know, I can really. And listening to Cole, shout out J. Cole, shout out Drake, shout out to Kendrick Lamar. I called him the trifecta of positivity as far as the music. Pick one. Out of the three, yep. mm, you can't put me in that boat, got man. Got you. Pick one. Got you. Out of the trifecta. And I called him trifecta because they know why. Yeah. It's literally like 33.33% that they contribute towards one just uh, unlimited being. What's that What's that? Uh, blue eyes, white dragon and Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah. Where you had to collect, oh, no, what was the thing where you had to collect the different cards? You had to collect all of them to make it come together. It was the yeah. Wizard of Time. Yeah. No, that's a thousand. That's a thousand dragon. Dang, you on to something. Yeah. You on to something. That's, that's what Kendrick, Lamar and uh, uh, nah, yeah, Drake yeah. and J. Cole, um, that's what they create. But anyway, you're not escaping it. Pick one. It's definitely, I'm going to give you, damn, we got to go with Cole off the rip just because he's from the city. We have more of a more similar lifestyle and life. Okay. Single parent, both basketball, both. Uh, mm. I honestly don't know. I might be making that Mecca, that privilege to Mecca. I might be yeah. not even leaving, just taking a tour other mm -hmm. places to, you know, network. Yeah. But uh, nah, nah, nah. Cole, Cole, Drake, Kendrick, only because, like I said, the furthest of my lifestyle would be Kendrick just because he's from the West Coast. Um, I discovered him last out of all of them. I discovered okay. Drake first. J. Cole came and took over, though, as my favorite artist, only because... As Now, I never forget this. Have you ever heard somebody say, uh, this artist changed my life? Yeah. He was, like, confused. Mm -hmm. Never well, got I that I was shit. confused, but I, I know what you... I, I never got you. it. Like, I ain't gonna lie to you. I never really got it. Listen to Cole, and I, I finally understood it. So, mm. I go with Cole, man. I'm giving him his flowers. Nice, nice. Um, And just real quick, what you said. You said, now you're at a space now where you just want to help people. That's your overall message with things. And I just wanted to touch on that. That's important because people may be in a space where they're doing it for the money. And then when they transition to, okay, I really need to do it to help people. I need to do it to uh, really help a cause. That's what usually takes people to that next step. You know what I'm saying? That's what gives people that next leap. Of course, you want to still make money with it. But when you're really looking at the big image as, okay, it's a bigger impact than just making a couple of dollars. Because this person may need to hear what I need to say. Because, you know, it may be 100 artists out here saying shit, but it's not... 
<laughs> one artist saying that specific thing that they really need to hear, mm -hmm. and I may have it on my heart, and they're just waiting for me to say it. They're just mm -hmm. waiting for me to give it to them. That's what uh, is usually a separating factor. I like that you said that. Um, all right, so let's move on to the second love, NBA. I mean, not NBA, basketball. Um, so, Cole, your favorite artist as far as uh, the rap game. Who's your favorite basketball player right now? I'm glad you asked that. Right now... Currently, I, I like to ask certain questions as far as artists or basketball players, like with your all your all time and then your new age, which would be like the, yeah. So the that last was two ten years. We're, so, we're, we're here because I was going to ask yeah, that next. So my you, new age, yeah. last ten years, mm, or fat, last ten to five. How you want to do it? Let's do let's do five to seven because that's why I see some, that's a lot still of, in the league. Still yeah, in the that's league. A, that's a crazy little bracket. Team. Yeah, still in the league. Probably, probably Ja Morant. Okay. New age. Um, who else? Who else? And no, 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 I'm tripping. Anthony Edwards should have been first, mm -hmm. only because it's something about Anthony Edwards. He got that Michael Jordan effect, like I do. He just, he just got that it factor. But John Morant, Anthony Edwards, uh, and that's probably those are my main two right now. Okay, nice. Who's your overall goat in basketball? Overall goat in basketball itself. Hmm, that's a hard one. It is. First, well, my personal goat was gonna always come to Kobe, but as far as my overall goat, um, I know it's, it's Kobe and it's Michael Jordan. That's gonna be the biggest battle. Mm -hmm. But as you get older in life, you start to learn like NBA players' lives and certain things they went through. You'll see you kind of like gravitate towards whose life was more similar to you. Mm -hmm. Kind of me. That's kind of the stage I'm in. Mean, as I've been learning a lot of artists or basketball players' lives, I've been starting to see like, damn, he went through the same thing I went yeah. through. So it's been making me like him more, but. People naturally do that, whether they yeah. realize it or not. It may be consciously or subconsciously. People will gravitate towards someone they can relate to, maybe someone they play like. They will gravitate towards that person and without even realizing it, kind of move like that person in a way. Yeah. Um, like, your, like your favorite football, your favorite basketball player, you may be like, oh, he came up like me. And next thing you know, you're looking up their moves. You're kind of moving like them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was the same with me on the football field. Like, I... At my favorite football player of all time was Mike Vick, and I played QB in high school, war number seven. So I found myself, without even realizing it, till I look back on the film later, I found myself really trying to play like him and study like him. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, that's very natural for us to do, for people yeah. to do, especially athletes. So I, I had a cool, I had a Kobe book, and I think that made me like Kobe so early because I was just learning so much about his life that mm -hmm. had nothing to do with basketball. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I like uh, Jordan for the fact that I have that Michael Jordan, that Goku from Dragon Ball Z determination. Like, man, once mm -hmm. I'm locked in, I'm locked in. And I Absolutely. always admire him for that. But as of recently, I had a friend tell me, uh, man, you you really remind me of KG because, you know, I talk so crazy on the mm -hmm. court. He definitely came from uh, the trenches, definitely came from the struggle. He from South Carolina, right? KG? And, and ironically, I'm from the Carolinas. I'm from North Fan, South Carolina. So that's, okay. you know, we got that. I didn't even know that until just now. I thought he was from like. Philly, for real, or something like nah, that. Nah, he's not from Philly. I think KG is from South Carolina. That is crazy. Yeah. But definitely used to sleep in the gym, man. Used to wear the same shoes. Had a lot of uh, struggle stories. And I, I really I really think that KG might be my most similar uh, player. But my GOAT, though, is definitely between MJ and, and Kobe. We're okay. Gonna, we're going to tie him up. All right, so let's break it down. So in basketball, your favorite currents are John Morant, Anthony Edwards, overall GOAT, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. Your favorite right now in the rap game, J. Cole, is he your GOAT? Well, J. Cole is, and that's what's crazy too, because well, he, he counts for a uh, new age, right? Like two, but he's, he's like technically, in the middle. yeah, that's he's what like I'm saying. He's like, yeah. he's a tweener. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, oh, no, no, I talked about this already. I'm an artist. So, so I got, so he's, 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 he's in my new age all time, mm -hmm. which would be him, uh, Drake. Uh, yeah, this is a new age. Drake, J. Cole. What's, what's my man's name? What's my man's name? We got, we got. We'll, we'll keep it them two. Okay. All, all time. Because I'm going yeah. to come back to another three. Maybe yeah. if, you, if you can have me again on another episode. But my all time uh, would be, what? 103,000, Lauren Hill, Tupac. Mm. Three stacks. I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And them last two spots is very inadmissible with a lot of, very interchangeable with mm -hmm. a lot of talent. Yeah. Uh, I get it. All right, cool. Well, why are you thinking we're going to come back to that? But the reason why I asked you for your goats and currents and whatnot is because we have a game to play. All right, so a segment on Day by Day podcast that I like to do is called This or That, which is easy. You're going to choose one or the other, right? So this is going to be This or That NBA versus Rap Game. How this is going to work, I'm going to lay out a artist. I'm going to lay out a NBA player. You have to pick one, meaning whichever one you don't pick, they're non-existent. All their accolades, everything never exists. So you can only pick one to stay. 
Mm. All right, let's get to it. That's tough. First and foremost, this or that, we got KD, Kevin Durant, or Snoop Dogg. Mm. That's tough. So it's either I don't get to see KD win mm-hmm. that championship with the Warriors, mm-hmm. or I don't get to listen to um, It Ain't No Fun If The Homies Can't Have None. Which one played more of an influence on in my life? Snoop Dogg's music or me watching KD play in the NBA? Doggy style doesn't exist. All them hits with him and Pharrell don't exist. This going to hurt when I meet these people. They Nothing on like, the chronic exists. They're like, bro, you erase me. It depends on what mood I'm in. Because if I'm on, and that's what I hate. So I'm a Libra. So if I'm on music, it's definitely going to have to be KD. I, I, I think it had to be KD only because. So you're picking KD to stay? Only. Nah, I pick KD got to go. KD got to go. So you're picking Snoop. Because if we don't have Snoop's music, we don't have all the other people who yep. interacted with Snoop's yep. life. Mm-hmm. KD would have still been KD right. had he not. And he still would have known all those other people had those connects, even if he didn't go to the NBA. Yeah. He was in that circuit at a young age. Yep. I love you, KD. I'm sorry. Don't beat me up. No, it's cool. We're going with Snoop. That's a good one. All right. Next, we got to show love to the light skinned brothers. Uh, Steph Curry <laughs> or J. Cole? Man, that's fucked up. Excuse my language. <laughs> Man, that was, that, that's, that's a messed up question. That's a messed up question. <laughs> got to pick one. I went, to, bro, it's a fun fact here. Mm-hmm. I really shouldn't tell nobody this, but I, I ain't that big enough for y'all to try to come and get me. I went to Dell Curry basketball camp uh, when I was very young. Mm-hmm. Steph Curry came. I played like uh, against Seth, Seth as well. But I have a signed rookie Steph Curry card right now. Really? Yeah, that's crazy. That is large. And I have not got it. Like I need to get it, you know, touched up and laminated. Like I ain't yeah, that with it. Yeah, but yeah. I really think I can probably make some money off that, right? At some point. Yes, bro. I wouldn't sell that for fucking years to come. Yeah. Like put that shit in a safe box, all types of shit. He personally gave me that and signed that at the camp too. So. Wow. Yeah, now nah, that's huge. Yeah, put that away somewhere. Damn. Um so I actually have ties to him. Yeah. But then you said J. Cole is Cole, and they and they both from the crib. Both that's of them from say. the crib. Curry a little bit more from the crib because he's yeah. from Charlotte, went to Charlotte, yeah. Latin, Charlotte Christian. That's a hard one. But mm-hmm. Cole actually did change my life. His music actually played a, a big influence. Um, damn, damn, damn. Yep. If I take away uh, Curry's accolades, the, the car don't mean nothing. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Cole only because. Keeping Cole or getting rid of Cole? I'm going to have to keep Cole. All right, get rid of Curry. Damn, can that be a tie? Because they honestly are it, very it, equally important. It, it can't, it can't, man. I'm a next. I should have like brought some Sorry, shots or something or something to kind of go for the tie. But um, yeah, nah, we we good concept. Yeah, yeah. So you're going. With, we're keeping Cole, getting rid of Curry. So the dynasty in Golden State never happens. Splash Bros never happens. Damn. Davidson, all of that. I say Ellis was the star at, at Golden State. Yeah. You know he was hating. You know if it wasn't Ellis was hating. Like Ellis was like, uh, I don't know, because you know we don't be knowing a lot of things uh-huh. from what I've heard. Ellis yeah. was like, uh, that style of basketball is not. It's not real basketball. And he was upset uh, about the running gun style. Yeah, and then uh, they end up being favored by the management, and they got him up out of there. Damn, and Monty was a beast. All right, so we're keeping cool. All right, next, Allen Iverson or Kanye West? Oh shit. Like the musicians been winning on this one. I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. Kanye, bro. And AI, that these are very good. Hey, don't forget this. This man got some of the best questions right now. I'm two, sorry, they're, man. they're two innovators. Two innovators, man. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to go with, with Yato, man. Only because I always been a. I ain't gonna say I wasn't an AI fan. I feel like AI was the person that you had to pick if you wanted to be like gritty, grimy, and hood or whatever. Mm-hmm. Now I always fuck with AI, but I really didn't get to like. I didn't get to really catch too many AI games. It's always like highlights, some of his, mm-hmm. like the great things he's did, the, the, the moments, the interviews. But like only because, nah, Kanye has played a, like I just really dived into Kanye's music, his discography. So, yeah. All right, cool, Kanye. All right. We got to show, we got to show love to the, uh, to the brothers on the east side of the world. <laughs> Eminem or Dirk Nowitzki? Okay, finally, finally, a basketball player <laughs> wins. I love you, M. No stand by heart, but I got to get at the dirt. Okay, we got dirt. All right. Up next, we got... Let's see, how should I put this? Nah, we'll keep it. All right, up next. LeBron James or Jay-Z? <laughs> <laughs> they have like equivalent yeah, uh, right. narratives that people have right. about them, which is crazy. The longevity in, in both of them, yeah. Yeah. That uh, was... Uh, uh, I, at the beginning of my NBA career of uh, watching NBA because I've never been in NBA but watching NBA and seeing LeBron he was very overhyped it was, which well, you know I kind of 
would think that he definitely proved his uh, hypeness. But I would say that uh, I was a LeBron, you know, naysayer at first. He proved himself to me, and I, I show very much respect to him. Shout yeah. out to him and everything he's doing for his community. So I can see how you can get caught up in that, but I'm going to have to definitely go with Jay-Z. All right. Hove. I'm going to have to go with Jay-Z. All right, we're keeping Hove. All right, up next, Lil Wayne or Kobe Bean Bryant? Man, this nigga's a genius. These, <laughs> these questions are crazy. Very similar, too. Yeah. Very similar. Uh, and, and Weezy even made the Kobe song for him. Yeah, I don't. That's gonna have to be the tie. I'm sorry. Tie? Come right. on, man. That's the cold. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's like the cold of the, uh, yeah. of the, the Steph Curry one. Very respectable. All right, we got a tie for that one. All right, last but certainly not least. Oh, no matter of fact, we got two more. We got two more. All right, for this one, Drake or Ja Morant? Damn, Ja. <laughs> <laughs> we got to keep. We got to keep Drizzy. We got to keep. Drizzy. We won't get Young Money if we won't. All right, last one, Kendrick Lamar. Or Anthony Edwards. Mm. 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 That means we never get to see what Anthony Edwards has done up to this point in his young career, nor do we get to see what could have been. Yeah, because he's young; he can play for another fifteen if possible. We don't get Ari Lennox though. All right, not Ari, but uh, SZA. We don't get SZA. SZA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We top, don't get uh, nobody top from Top Dog. I don't know. That's a good one. I. I that ain't the title. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, I'll gonna... give you one tie. I'll give you the tie for Weezy yeah, and they, Kobe. They but we, we, yeah, we got to pick on this one. I probably have to go with uh, with Kendrick only because I know Ant going to be great. He was going to be great whether yeah. he existed. He did. So we're keeping Kendrick. Yeah, Kendrick got to stay. All right, that was a good one. Let's see. Let's tally it up. So the artist got one with Snoop, one with Cole, uh, Kanye, Dirk was a basketball, Weezy and Kobe canceled out. You pick Jay. Okay, so it look like the artist won. All right. That makes sense. All right. Um, to stay on basketball for a second, uh, your playing style, your content on your, your page for your basketball clips, very entertaining for two reasons. Three, eh, yeah, two reasons. One of which you're playing, like just literally the, the skills that you have. I, one of the cleanest clips I've seen was when you asked what was better, the move or the finish? And didn't you finish with like a underhand roll? Like you went from here and then you came under with the yeah, underhand yeah, roll. Yeah. That was smooth as fuck. Like, so your content when it comes to basketball, very on point. And you're, and you're not just at one point playing against G League. Like you're at every gym. Like I've seen like 10 different gyms on your, on your page. You playing against everybody. And the second reason I love your game is because you, you stand on what you say on that court. You know what I mean? What, what was the word that you used to describe it earlier? Started uh, with an E. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know what the word meant, but I, I knew I knew what it meant, but I didn't know the word. But I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. If that makes sense. <laughs> 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 but your, your playing style, just describe for the folks on both aspects your playing style. It's so abrasive, man. Um, it's in your face. Um, like I said, that KG type mentality, like even if you give me a bucket and you think like, you know, okay, that's going to shut him up. Like I'm mm -hmm. coming right back. Like I have that... Um, like I I got I gotta keep going hard. I gotta like sometimes I can have a moment where because after I started getting going, I'm scoring. I started mm. like you know get hyped up. Yeah. I can have moments where I'm yelling uh, after a good move, and people will take it as oh he coming at me, he yelling yeah. at me, and it's like nah. I'm, at one point I was sorry as hell. I was mm. I never forget this rec league basketball Bethlehem Center, Southside Homes, but I would score like zero points. Go out there get a bunch of rebounds, you no, know, and uh, they would. Do the hot breath on the on the wall on the van on the way back. Put zero. Everybody laughing oh, and shit. shit. So like, man, it's so <laughs> oh shit. It's so much uh, on the shoulder of uh, it's so much on the, on the chips of, the, of my shoulder that I mm -hmm. uh, play with. That you know, I just I be so happy to do even the simplest of things. Yeah, just came back from hyperextension. Um, blessed be God for even healing me, and I um I couldn't even like jump, barely walk, and so for me to be able to dunk and get you know rehab you know rehab myself uh -huh. and get back like. I would just be so happy like, yeah. just to even do anything. So people be thinking it's like I'm coming at them. It's not even. Nah, that's you. Um, it's it's you in your own world. Like I, it sounds like what it is is it sounds like that when you do yell and whatnot. That's you kind of just embracing what you went through to even get to the point where you at now at being that good on the court. You said you were trash. You know what I'm saying with the with the rec league and whatnot. Definitely. So how did you get better? Like what what was that determination like to become better? Um. Just the anger from those those losses. Mm -hmm. um, on top of that, Michael Jordan type story. I um, 
made the team ninth grade, but then I um I wouldn't even say I was cut. Made the team, then I wasn't able to play because of my following grades from eighth grade. Yeah, coming into ninth grade, and that oh just, shit! So they keep they look at your eighth grade grades. Charlotte is lame for that. Yeah. Damn, if you come in if your eighth grade grades is bad, and you come in ninth grade trying to play, you're not gonna be able to play. Wow. Yeah. Nah, back at the crib, it's fresh clean slate. slate. Yeah. yeah. yeah see, if, if, had it been clean slate for me, I really think journeys would have been different. But we met, we met. But, but you uh, needed that. No, I'm telling you that. So me not making a team, then I, you know, getting in trouble. I start getting in trouble. I end up having to, like, went, end up going, to, end up going to jail a couple of times. My pops had never been there. Came mm. out of nowhere, bailed, bailed me out of jail, made me move with him, go to summer school. Mm. Now I can say whatever I want to say about him not being there for whatever time. But had he not did that, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been able to um, play high school ball. Would never mm. been on the journey I came. So I give him props for that. When, uh, how old were you at this time when he bailed you out? Sixteen. And what was the most previous time you saw him before that? It had been about years. It had been yeah. years. For at least a good three, four. So how did he, did someone reach out to him to? You know, you know family talking. I had yeah. been getting in trouble a little too much. I think yeah. it was about the third, fourth time I got locked up. I got uh, bailed out this third day I was in there. I thought I was going to be in there for a minute. Uh -huh. I had over 48 charges. and um, Damn, 48? And when you when you do something in one uh, in a nice area. Okay. Um, and this for the people that don't know. Um, they'll put all the other crimes in that area on you. Oh, just shit. To, just, yeah. until, just until they figure out who has done all the break-ins in that area, whatever the case may be. I didn't even know that was allowed or illegal. So are these fel these are felonies, misdemeanors? I had over 48 felonies. I've been charged at the highest over 70, but in that specific situation, over 48 felonies. And by the grace of God, I have no record. All rec ever, all charges that have ever been charged against me have been dismissed. Expunged. Yeah, yeah. The best. Never had to tell to get it. So, you know, we ain't going to get too, too, too gangster. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's what's up, man. So yeah, it sounds like, you know, it was like at that point in time where it's like, okay, his father need to be in, like his father need to show him that. Yeah. Was it in Charlotte? Did your pops live in Charlotte when he took you in? No, I actually, and this, I think this helped change my life. He took me to Rock Hill, not Rock Hill, but he took me to South Carolina, uh, around Central uh, County area, around Clemson. Okay. And, um, I mean, there's that culture, just them having, South Carolina got way more boosters, way more people that's going to support that sports program. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Coach Padgett at Seneca High School. Um. One of the coolest, he gave you Matthew McConaughey vibes, one of the coolest uh, coaches that I've ever had. And uh, he played a good influence just telling me and just teaching me that, you know, you use this uh, as an outlet. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, I was just using basketball as a, as a focal point to get attention. I could dunk. Mm -hmm. been able to dunk since I was 14. And uh, I just would just dunk. You know, see some cute girls try to dunk. Yeah, The best players there, I'm talking to them. I'm trying to get in good with the team. I go dunk. You know, and it, you know, he really helped me realize that there's more substance to basketball. So... End up coming back up here. Shout out to him. And uh, that helped me. So that's why you said you represent both Carolinas in a way. Because you, they they took you in. And Spent you embraced them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also am something that I, you know, I tell you, though. I'm actually from Rock Hill, South Carolina. I've been in Charlotte since I was about seven. Okay. Six, seven. So that's why I say I'm from both. Because I spent so much time. Yeah, you were back places. and forth. Yeah, that makes sense. And plus, it usually goes like that. Like, usually Carolinas rep, you know what I'm saying, one another. Like, oh, yeah. From what I've always heard from people and whatnot. Um. So, okay. So instead of using it as just a you know thing to kind of get attention with, uh, from your coach, kind of helping you realize this is a passage through learning life, through becoming a better person in life. You know what I mean? And you hear it all the time: basketball, boxing, football, music, whatever it is, it's some type of en entity that is bigger than what it is in a way mm -hmm. in that person's life. It shows them the better side of life. It shows them you know, certain certain aspects they take from that and they, you know what I'm saying, it's parallel to life and they really embrace it, then it's clicks. That's what helps it click. For me, it was football, of course. I will not be nearly as disciplined today as if uh, if it wasn't for football. Wouldn't probably work out as much if it wasn't for football. Like, yeah, I, I definitely get that. Um, So back to like your style real quick. Um, yeah, it, it's I, I get kind of like a calm, collective presence right now. And then on the court, like you said, you're yelling. Totally so different. Is it like a, is it, uh, out of body alter ego experience like what happens low key because like i tell people this all the time bruh it's only on the court i have people yeah. who like literally are like enemies of me people who i've been knowing for years uh -huh. um who refuse to follow me on 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 all social media yeah. if they, but see me we you know we can banter go at it but refuse to like just have any type of good dialogue with me just because of so many bad experiences on the court where I might have mm. won, said so much stuff. Yeah. And I try to tell people all the time, bro, I'm the coolest guy outside of the court. I like right after I argue with people whenever I leave, I tell them all the time, bro, I will help y'all if y'all get jumped at the gas station. Yeah. This is basketball. I look at it from a Reggie Miller, Gary Payton perspective. Uh -huh. 
mental warfare will always win over physical, no matter what anybody says, what anybody thinks. So if I can get into your head mentally, I can mm -hmm. make you mad, I can throw you off, knowing that you might have something better than me in the game. You might have a better situation in which your team hitting threes right now, I can't do nothing about it. But if I can get into your head mentally and I can stop you, I can throw you off, I'm going to do it. Right. And this new age is a little sensitive. It's a little, you know, they don't like to hear certain things. I come up from a little gritty, grimy, where a, a mm -hmm. F you is like saying, hey, so like, which is still not okay. Mm -hmm. But I, I just like to let people know that, man, you can't let talking or anything get to you. Right. So with 50,000 people in the stands at NBA games, mm -hmm. and if every NBA player focuses on everything that's being said, you're not going to be able to be productive. They're done. And yeah. that's the secret. If I can make you be unproductive from mm -hmm. my mental, just me talking, not even my, my physical defense, I'm going to do it every time. Yeah. That's what's up. So let me ask you this. Recently on Twitter, I've seen, you've probably seen the two videos of like uh, the AAU, like little kids, they probably like 10 years old and they are just going crazy. Yeah. Like, I mean, not just every here and there is every <laughs> defensive stop, every shot they make. There's some type of talking or some type of display taunting. It's something. And these are 10 year old kids in the AAU. What's your take on that? Which, and because in a way you kind of do that when you play. So as a 10-year-old kid, let's say your son's 10 years old and he's doing that. He's one of the main kids in the videos that was doing all that. Would you want your are you cool with your son uh playing and displaying that? Or would you want him to be more chill until he gets older? Yeah, um, highlight culture has killed uh the game of the youth to a degree. There's people like myself who had to do this or who do YouTube basketball content creating to create a lane and open a lane for themselves. Um, in a situation in which they may not want to go overseas, play pro, or you know, try to go to the NBA. Mm -hmm. And it's a great thing for them, especially as far as my unique journey. The only thing about that is with almost every new creation, you get bad and good byproducts. Mm -hmm. And a bad byproduct of this highlight culture and, you know, because there's a lot of money in this as, as well. Shout out yeah. to Ballers Life, shout out to Caffeine and all the, you know, all the basketball entities. But a bad byproduct of that is the youth seeing it, not understanding the journey that these people have went through or what they've mm -hmm. done to do this. Yeah. And um, you know, them mimicking it and them wanting to do it. Yeah. So so you wouldn't be for it. Um, but then like what would you say? Because they see y'all do it, mm -hmm. they see you do it, they see professionals do it, so they want to do it. How would you break that down to them? That's not cool. Be like, but you do it. So why yeah, they'll be yeah, like, yeah. Well, you do it, dad. Why can't I do it? I, I just want to let them know. So it comes from a point of a certain amount of work has to be put in. And uh I think this new age has this mindset, it's a microwave mentality where it's like just because I have the title, just because I have the materials, I bought the materials for this, this is what I want to do, I deserve the highest amount of accolades in this now, mm. just because. And so I think that also is a part of it. We have um, people who want the finished product, people who want to just be able to do something just because they're doing it. Yeah. After this became a thing, there was an oversaturation of basketball content creators. And right now that's a part of the problem that people like myself are dealing with. Mm. I've been doing this for a long time. I've honestly just started popping like I wanted to and I'm very happy, very proud of uh, what I've done. But... The same thing happened to me in, in music. That's literally why this popped off. Because after the baby blew up in Charlotte, shout out to him, um, it created an oversaturation in the market of, of artists. Mm -hmm. And um, people like myself who have been making money for the longest got uh, overshadowed by people who just want to do it as a get rich ske uh, scheme. Or for the attention oh, or yeah. both, yeah. And it's not take away from my journey, but I just you know took some other steps around it. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying stuff about popping back into it. But now that there's an oversaturation in that market and now that we're seeing little kids um, get too heavily involved with trying to trying to get a celebration out of right. not even win the game. You you you'll see kids do that and don't even win the yeah, game. That's, yeah, that's yeah, bad. Seriously. And I don't teach that, and I wouldn't want to preach it. But I wouldn't want that to uh, happen. As I wouldn't want that to be a, a new thing and, and be deemed as okay. But I know I can't do anything about it until I get the full platform for it. I mm -hmm. always let little kids know, like, win the game first. You right. can celebrate as much as you want to do, but win the right. game before you have the need to feel like you need to show off for the camera. Yeah. Like they, not only will they not win the game, but they may only have four points. But those two <laughs> baskets, they're going to let it be seen. You know what I'm saying? Let it be seen and heard. You know what I'm saying? Just because of them. It, but I like how you said, um, you know, the highlight culture in youth sports today is is a thing. Because you see it, like, I, you know, of course, me being football mostly, I see it in football, like before the games, you know, when warmups, when the camera come up on them, they spend a good 30 to 60 seconds talking dancing, crazy. talking, flexing, all that. You know what I'm saying? They then get in the game and get their head cracked. You know what I'm That's saying? That's what I, honestly, I will say this is what's hard to cut you off. No, you're good. I think that social media has created a thing of fake perception. Technically, think about it. If I can post these highlights on my, on my, on my, because remember, we don't know how many points they had. We didn't see the right, full game. Exactly. But if you have a good following on social media, um, remember, I, I, truly, I truly believe to a degree social media does not make you accountable for a lot of things. So if I'm not that good, but I'm posting these highlights and I got a good little following, don't nobody know. Everybody come, oh yeah, you doing your thing. Basically, it creates this culture of people 
faking a lifestyle in their, head, in their heads and thinking that they are really um, deserving of certain things yeah. because they're putting up these clips. They're getting this positive feedback from people who honestly might be a, a whole fan group of uncles and friends and, and aunties. And I'm not invalidating that and I'm not invalidating anybody's accomplishments, but I want to people, I want to let people know that I really believe that um, the grade in which we we um, can grade real work mm. and real, real content, real productivity and real creation, real art has kind of gone out the window. Mm. It's more so of a, if you're doing it, you should you should be held to the same regards as me. Yeah. Though your quality of work might not even be as good. Right. And so, yeah, that mixed with nepotism and uh, just people being, uh, having the pay for, pay to play mentality with anything, you being able to pay for likes or paying for anything, you know, creates this anomaly. Yeah. Um, but the cream always rises to the top. You know what I'm saying? That boy, all that, what, what, Drake, what Drake's pop said, uh, all that other bullshit is here today and gone tomorrow. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. the real shit does rise to the top, but that can be, you know, um, that can be kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it can kind of push someone away. You no, know what I mean? Definitely. And and But you have to be patient because it, like I said, it'll rise to the top. You're like, damn, I'm really putting quality time, effort, blood, sweat, and tears into this shit. You know what I mean? And I'm doing it for the best being of me and the next person watching. Then you got this person that's doing it for, like you said, get rich quick scream or uh, quick, you know, attention or yeah. whatever, quick fake following or whatever. And it's blowing up more than mine. You know what I mean? I'm but glad you said that. It's no longevity on that side. Yeah. Yours will have a true, since it's a true foundation, it's always something that it'll stand on. You'll get longevity off of it. You just got to be patient because it will rise to the top over the bullshit. That's 100. Yeah. Uh, man, sex, drugs, and violence will always sell. I'm glad you said that because all the content creators who out here really putting in work, who really have good substance, really putting out good quality, mm -hmm. don't get burnt out and don't um don't lose sight. Because yeah. um if 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 you're putting out something that's real and you're seeing your counterparts putting out stuff and it's 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 getting bigger, but the substance of it isn't right, because you're not really losing. It's not they, you know you know what I'm saying like you were saying it's not gonna last long. So nah, all well. my content creators out there, no matter what you do, stay grounded, keep doing your thing. Always. Um, to switch sports real quick, I want to talk about something. Let's talk boxing for a second. Saw a video with you throwing hands. Um, where was you at? Shout out to my man, I am Dino. I was at a boxing event uh, that he was having. He's a very big YouTuber here in the city. Uh, multifaceted. He makes music as well. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty good experience, man. Yeah. So, I mean, break down that experience. Like, break down where you were, you know, the type of setting and everything. Very it's interesting hilarious. video. So it was um, in a nice little hotel lobby. They, I think they rented it out. He rented it out. And it was really nice. But um, it's a boxing smash or pass video. It's like smash or pass is a very popular uh, YouTube thing where... Yeah. People uh, let you know whether or not, I, you know, go past all the talking and shit, let you know whether or not they'll right. smash or pass. And, right. uh, so that was a different edition in which we would box and then we would do that. And so... So you would box and then... The females, you know, because they already watched all the boxing rounds. Oh, so and after they, they watch y'all fight. Okay, yeah, so that's, yeah, yeah. Real, that's real, like... Hands on. You know what I mean? Like... Kick, King of the Jungle, Lion, Testosterone, bringing out, you know what I'm saying, they watching Man. it. That's real. It was, it was hilarious. I'm not going to lie to you. Shout out to um guy fought, uh, Urban Thug. Shout out to him because uh, he good sport about it. Short, mm. stocky football playing. He wanted man, him if he catch you with that left hook, rushing the whole time. I was yeah. I was I was weaving between so many haymakers. That oh, was like man. technique versus straight boot. Yeah, strength. yeah. So who won the fight? I definitely won because because of the technique. I landed more. So so I mean I'm analytical. So I actually used to box. Okay. Um, I, I landed more punches. And my, my 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 moves looked a little cleaner. I had one moment though where I don't even know if I ducked my head or if I was moving. It looked it looked awkward, but I, just me knowing what I know, I was like, yeah, you got to clean that up. Like I was mm -hmm. watching the video, I was like, not, not you can't do that again. But I definitely won. I ain't, I ain't taking no L's out here. Okay, so then afterwards you won the fight. Then the girls did the smash and pass on you. How did that go? Man, I got off. Man, no nobody uh, passed <laughs> me. Every girl said they would smash. Not every girl followed me. I'm on y'all ass, but we gonna go there. <laughs> So I mean, did did any of them come through with the uh, with with the, with the promise? Yeah, with, with yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, man, I, I hate to say it. That smash the past shit. Be it definitely be a, a fuck fest and you know a a, a, um, a scouting event uh -huh. for to see who gonna fuck with who. But normally, most of the females there is only trying to fuck with who got the most clout, who got the most money. Mm -hmm. And most of the niggas is there is trying to fuck with who is the most slutty and who's the quickest to fuck something. Yeah. I'm near the network finesse everybody Absolutely. out the fact that you found out who Kwan that guy was and then you remember my face. Right. So the next time you see me, you can't say you don't know me. It could be an ego boost as well. Man, it felt great. Now that specifically, definitely that boxing, because I'm not trying to be funny, bro. I'm, I have Kanye West, uh, 
God like energy. I think I can do anything and everything. Mm -hmm. Like I knew I was going to win. Like yeah. I was I was ready. Uh huh. You foresaw it. And I like how you said you went there for a networking a networking event. That's what I'm trying to transition my mind to with going out to like clubs and whatnot. I've never been a crazy club type ever. Like especially like because I'll go and I'll be like drunk and. You know what I'm saying? It takes like a whole day the next day to recover. So Man. I'm trying to transition to where I go to clubs, strip clubs, just for networking to get people on the show. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, so, that's, been, that's been my new thing. Bro. Yeah. Like, well, it's not even my new thing. I've been on it. I just ain't been going hard because the the ails of loneliness and uh, wanting companionship on a late night will fuck it up. Yeah, okay. But like, bro, my new thing is now I don't want to go to a club unless I'm performing. And if I'm not performing, I don't want to go to a club unless I have a budget to pay the DJ to play my song. Mm. I'm in this mindset right now, full creativity to the point where I can be around the baddest female prototype of actually what I want physically. And she could be throwing it. Mm -hmm. I'm not on that right now only because, now I'm not finna sit here and act like I don't, you know, we like, yeah. motherfuckers like the fuck. Y'all stop acting like y'all don't like the fuck. <laughs> I'm tired of everybody acting like they don't like the fuck. I mean, that's how we here, ain't it? Come on, bro. We love it, but we just hate the fact that it's a, a, a constant exchange of energy and we feel like, uh, after a while, we feel like we're not getting out of anything out of it. Mm. And that's respect and we un I understand that. But at the end of the day, don't demonize your urges. Don't demonize um, certain natural things. Control them. Don't let them control you. But mm -hmm. right now, I'm in such a full mode of creation that... I would rather be a business partner with a female than a sexual partner, only yeah. because the the business relationship will last longer than our physical relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to, like I said, it's so hard to master your flesh as a man. But once you master your flesh as a man, um, homes are protected, F people are protected. You're not, you're not, you're not um, leaving your mission because you're so worried about your next possible prospect. Yeah. And then that's that's what I think. Only th I really think that's one of the only things that holds a man holds a man back. Because yeah. as a man, when you're honestly trying to talk to every girl, and you fucking with every girl, and then when it's popping, mm -hmm. when it's actually working out for you, for yeah. people like us, we yeah. social, we, you know, we're content creators. We got a little bit of a following where people want to be around or see what we got going on. This shit can really take over your life to the mm -hmm. point where you're not being productive because you're fucking off so much. And then once you realize that you try to get back, you know, you get you get in the cycle. You start to try to get you know be more productive, but since you've left that steam of productivity, now you got to play catch up. Mm -hmm. And I'm just I'm done with that catch up. I will say this, and I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop ranting though. Can't find somebody who can't um, agree with or be cohesive to your lifestyle or at least understand it and not demonize you for it, then you don't need to be with them. Mm. If you constantly talk to people who are constantly in the mode of trying to change you and change what you do and change your schedule. Now, if it's for the better, I understand. But we know when it's for the better and when somebody just literally doesn't like our lifestyle and wants us to change. Yeah. But you should leave those people. Don't let them drain your energy, man. Don't mess with no liabilities out here. Assets only. I'm not going to go down. A, I'm, I'm going to just say this. Everything you just said as far as the temptation and the focus by having business partners over sexual partners. Did you go through any type of celibacy or abstinence, I should say, for this to like truly realize it? Or were you just able to uh, dis uh, distinguish the difference and separate it off bucks? A little bit of both. But also, bro, the respect factor. After a while, I start realizing like, bro... Though it's okay, I've always been that perfect side guy, that guy that girls call mm -hmm. while having a boyfriend, while just broke, you know, just broke up with their boyfriend, and it was cool for the time being. But after a while, I started realizing like there's no respect in it. Like God. it's like like it's threes, fours, two a.m. Yeah, you're, you're their personal dildo, and that's it. And and it was cool, and it, it and it still gets cool for the idea of it because I'm not that guy that's gonna get hurt, that's gonna get cheated on when you're on your vacation. Uh -huh. And that's the 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 pride I took in it. But mm -hmm. after a while, it's like it becomes it, it becomes slightly degrading. Yeah, when they don't respect what you got going on. I had somebody text me the other day. Where you at? What you doing? It's like twelve. I'm like, uh, I know it's a little late. Um, I know what type of time you on, but I'm about to go to the studio. Mm -hmm. And she's like, "Well, okay, I'm gonna pull up. We are gonna fuck in the parking lot." <laughs> I oh, was wow. like, "I was like, nah, but you don't understand. I already paid yeah. for the time." Yeah. So I was like, uh, "Like, I, I, I don't know what she said. She said some other slick shit." I was like, "You gonna put in?" Right. And she stopped replying. Mm. But basically, that was my perfect example of, to a degree, the pros and cons with that is you don't get us uh, respect to a degree, and um, you know, all everybody want love when you actually in the mindset of want something or you know feeling like you want to have that 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 little you know. A little romance, you don't get it, or it's not. It's gonna be hard to attain, and then yeah. people don't trust you. Like people don't trust you when they know you have a lot of options. So that's been the main thing I've been dealing with, talking to new people, and them either not liking my lifestyle, them not fully accepting it, but faking it till they make it, or them not trusting me to the point where they know they don't trust me, but they're still sticking around me. Yeah, and that's that's actually very exhausting. Having to prove yourself. Remember, I said this: if you have to prove yourself the entire time you're talking to somebody, or it's always an uphill battle of. Letting them know that that wasn't what it was, like, nah, 
got to get out of that. Hey, that's on point, man. That's on point. Stand on your focus. Don't let these temptations drive you away from it. That's very on point. Um, yeah. Um, before we get out of here, I do want to touch on, because like I said, it's a, it's a hundred things going on with you. Uh, that guy, Quan, or Quan, that guy. And uh, one thing before we get out of here I want to talk on is you said you have stand-up comedy coming soon. This Tuesday, um, shout out to my man Chris Cunningham and Ethan the Artist. This Tuesday, I think every Tuesday I'll be doing stand-up comedy. So, that's, yeah, I got uh, Comedy Skin on the way as well. The Cap app. That shit is gonna be hilarious. Is that the one where you stood up for the jury and you nah, read the nah. jury thing? That was actually a music video for Reese Rap. Shout out to Reese Raps. But nah, nah. Uh, I'm gonna send you a snippet. This shit is gonna be hilarious. It's like a little, little comedy app about a, a comedy skit about an app, a relationship app about whether mm, you're capping or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I'm looking forward to it. So let me ask you this. All right, we got comedy, we got stand up comedy, we got uh, being an artist, uh, we have basketball, um, acting. Uh, the whole shebang, even podcasting. Real quick, the name of your podcast that's coming out. Oh, getting by with Quan, that guy's name of my podcast. Y'all go follow that. All right. So we have all these, you know what I'm saying, all these uh, feathers in your hat. Which one gives you more life? Which art gives you the most life while performing or while acting in that art? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, Battle to the death between music and basketball. Mm. Makes sense, because you started off with those are the first two loves. Yeah. Makes sense. Battle to the death between those. And I honestly think this is how life works. Remember I said this, y'all. Sometimes the thing that pop off don't even be the thing that you wanted to be. Yeah. I truly believe that comedy and me doing these comedy songs, because so I'm just throwing it out there now. I'm doing a lot of comedy songs, mixing the music with my comedy, but mm -hmm. I think that'll probably pop off faster. And I'll be upset, but it's like you got to accept it. Yeah, like, yeah. And listen, when you got a gift, you got a gift. Make that shit happen. Because that's what happened with Jamie. Jamie mm. wanted to be a musician. Oh, he was actually he played football as well, and that was one of his main really? first ones, music, music and football. But like, yeah. Okay, so okay, he probably had a blast when he shot uh, any given Sunday. Then fighting LL Cool J. Yeah, yeah, you heard about that, right? Crazy. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, I'm 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 a man. I'm ten toes. I ain't backing down. But damn, that's a tall task to ask for to to fight LL. You get caught with one of them hooks. It's a wrap. It was one of those where he 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 got yeah he didn't get lucky on that one. So you speaking of fighting, and then you've done the boxing and whatnot. Have you ever lost a fight? Nah. Never lost a fight? I got jumped twice, and that's the only thing that you can count as losing the fight, but technically- Yeah, that don't count. I only got jumped because I was winning the fight, mm. <laughs> the two times that I got jumped. Okay. And you know, but nah, nah, never, never. And if you ever feel like, if anybody see this and you feel like you did beat me, come talk to me. We can set up the boxing match because I'm actually about to start doing that. And I will host it. Yeah, I'm about, I will I'm about to start- gladly host I'm it. about to start doing domestic and uh, amateur fights because think about it. It's a lot of people who, I mean, it's a lot of people who watch me who don't like me, but act like they do. I would make money off people wanting to see me lose. So people, yeah. So, okay. So you have both, both roads. You have people that want to see you lose because they think whatever of you. And then you have people that don't like you because of, let's say, basketball. They took, you know what I'm saying, personal, the shit talking that you was doing on the court, mm -hmm. and now they don't like you. So you have both, you're laying out the red carpet for both avenues. Yeah. I really think that would be great because I know people to pay a quick little dub. Yeah. Quick little 20, 30 to come see me fight. Yeah. Hey, listen, if y'all want to smoke with Quan, that guy, day by day, we'll, we'll host it. We'll set it up. Sponsored. And we'll, yeah. Yeah. We'll make that shit happen, we man. Here. Man, hey. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to everything else that you have coming. And I mean everything else uh, from the acting, from the music, basketball, stand-up comedy, music comedy. Um, everything coming up, man. I'm very looking much forward to it. Like I said, the content on your page is so diverse, so entertaining. Thank you, man. Um, and then even so persuasive. You know what I'm saying? Just inspirational. Just with uh, some of the stuff you've been saying on this show tonight. Very inspirational. I know it's going to touch people. Um, which is your ultimate goal, like we said earlier. That's so it's, it's full circle. Um, let everybody know real quick your IG handle um, and then any other social medias, YouTube that you have that can they can find your content. On the shirt, man. Quan that guy, man. Uh, that's my name on everything. Uh, Snapchat. I don't know if we still use that, but Quan from SSHB. But um, just make sure you keep it playing. Keep a smile on your face, man. Don't forget my name. Don't forget my face, man. The Eagles need to sign this man too. I forgot to say that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna actually say this on camera. So at the, the Super Bowl, so leading up to the Super Bowl, week one, we played the Lions. I said February 12th, we're going to be in Arizona. Man, if I saw it, like I wasn't just saying it. Like I'm like, yo, our team is stacked. We made it to Arizona February 12th, and I made videos every single week. 
I would diss the team that we're playing. I would tag yeah. fans. I would tag fans of the team that we're playing that week. And I would talk big shit. I would even tag the team itself <laughs> and former players. Yeah, yeah. So people were on my just how you said when people wanna they want they they would pay to watch you fail. People were on my ass every week. When we get to the playoffs, y'all losing to the Giants, y'all losing to the 49ers. Y'all only got lucky because the Brock Purdy was out, whatever it was, yeah, right? Yeah. So people were waiting. People were waiting. Nah, shout out to you for real, bro. So that's, I really feel like you helped speak that into fruition. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, really remember we got this on camera. Eagles, y'all need to sign him as a media influencer, podcaster, a content creator, whatever, because he spoke that into fruition. I ain't gonna lie. <clears throat> so uh, um, the Super Bowl was tough. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna add on to what you just said. The Super Bowl was Jeez. tough. I'm in Philly for the game, and when we lost, I've never had this many notifications. No, the two times I've never had when we lost the Super Bowl, when we lost to the Redskins. Commanders, whatever the fuck. I've never had <laughs> that many notifications. I've never been tagged by that many stories on IG in my life. Oh, yeah. And that's another thing. When you fail or when something bad happens with you and you're a big entity, people be ready to They come. was waiting on it. I haven't heard from them all week. We lose the Super Bowl, they tagging me. That's why I did a video after. I was like, this is what y'all wanted, right? Yeah. That's what I was talking about. But I, I add to, so uh, a positive that came out to it. I'm in Philly. I'm watching the game at uh, Xfinity Live in Philadelphia right next to the Eagle Stadium. Mind you, I live in Charlotte. All of my content that I do is in Charlotte or Maryland, but usually in Charlotte, right? So um, I'm at the bar in Xfinity Live, and a dude comes up to me. He's like, yo, you the boy that be, they say ball in Philly. It's like, yo, you the boy that be making the Philly joints or Philly joints. I'm like, what you talking about? He's like, you be on my feed. You be making the, the Philly videos. I was like, what you, I still, I'm drunk. I don't know what uh -huh. he's talking about. Like, he's like, yeah, I be seeing you on my feed on IG. You the, you the boy that be making the Philly videos, right? It's like, nice to meet you, yo, da, da, da. I was like, oh, shit. And that's what it's for. Shit. That should be feeling good. That's what I it's for. I was like, oh, shit, the Eagles joint, the Eagle video. You dead ass? It be reaching y'all. It it, it it wrote, it reached him in Philly, yeah. right? Asked for, he asked for a picture and all that. You can't beat that, man. Bro, right, right then and there, I said, you know what? And then on top of the fact that people were ridiculing and waiting for me to lose the Super Bowl and tagging me left and right, right then and there. 2023, 2024, I'm going to be the number one Philadelphia Eagles content creator. And he said it here first. Easily. Number one. I know it's going to be true, too. Shout out to the dude in Philly and shout out to all y'all that tagged me whenever we lost, or whether it was the Redskins or the Super Bowl, but especially that Super Bowl. I mm. already know what my promo video is going to be for the for the intro of, the, of this mm. season. I already know. I'm going to just say this. I'm shooting it in Philly. That's all I'm going to say. But this year, when it comes to content creation for the Eagles, it's not even going to be close. My shits were good this year. I, I stand on it. It took hours. Each video took hours to do. This year going to be five to ten times greater. Man, Easily. and I promise you, I know for a fact you mean that. Let Easily. me get my drop off too. Yes, sir. I was that man, and I'm still that man, but I definitely took a 2v2 two a two v two loss to the next chapter in a situa situation where they kind of flipped the best player from North Carolina to play against us because technically mm -hmm. if it's next chapter versus North Carolina, it should be next chapter versus North Carolina. Uh -huh. Rob Collins should have played with us. But know this, Rob Collins, MGM, Hoodie Kill. I'm getting my face back next chapter. Shout out to y'all for having me, but I'm definitely getting my face back. Y'all gonna definitely see how I really play on the court, man. And just like that, these are two dudes that speak everything into existence right here, man. We know what manifestation is because we speak it, we see it, and we grind, we 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 make it through that mud to get to it. We don't just see it and speak it. That's what people have it fucked up when they say this whole manifestation thing. Nah, these are two dudes right here, me and Quan, that guy. We know how to work towards what we speak and what we see. And it's just like that. And for everybody that's tuning in, I truly appreciate y'all from the bottom of my heart, whether you're listening on your podcast platform or watching on YouTube, I just ask that you like, comment, and share this out. That's all I ask. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you hit subscribe. If you're listening, check this out on YouTube at Day by Day TV or just type in Day by Day Podcast and you'll see the episode featuring Quan, that guy. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that y'all stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed. Peace.